it is Nikki. Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be talking about some of the things I've been reading and learning recently about the challenge of writing endings. Which to be honest is something that I didn't really understand for most of my writing journey when I first started out and even until like not too long ago I just didn't really get what was so hard about writing endings. Like don't you just write your story until you get to the end of your story and then stop? It took me a while to realize that that is a major oversimplification, but recently reading a book called Go Teen Writers, I found a line that just really, really stuck with me, and I've been thinking about it a lot recently. One of the authors of that book tells a little story about submitting a story to a publisher or an editor and getting the critique back that her story didn't really have an ending, it just stopped. Which sounds a little weird because the story technically ends, so doesn't that mean it has an ending? But not really, there's more to it than that. And I realized, looking back at some of my old stuff, that I have fallen into the same trap in the past and that some of my old projects have made the same mistake. So like with one of those projects, I wrote a whole story from beginning to end, but then when I went back to rewrite, I realized that it was just getting too long and I needed to cut it off. So I picked a point in the story that was like, okay, this will be book one and just stopped. The thinking was that that's the ideal cliffhanger. Like what could be more cliffhangery than literally leaving my characters dangling off a cliff or stuck in a cave or you know, whatever, their problem completely unresolved. I thought that was like suspense, that's ideal. People will want more. The thing was I didn't really add any resolution whatsoever. And from reading Go Teen Writers or The Story Equation or any of the things that I've been learning from recently, I've learned that there still needs to be some resolution even in a cliffhanger story. You need some kind of denouement to wrap all the loose threads together to give your reader a sense of closure that will be satisfying, even as you leave some threads loose that will drag them forward or lure them forward rather into the next book. One of the most memorable cliffhangers that I have ever experienced in my entire life is the end of The Empire Strikes Back. I think it was like 10 or 11 when I saw it for the first time. I was madly in love with Han Solo. He was my first film crush, like my first actor crush, and I was just devastated by the ending of The Empire Strikes Back, which is, you know, a pretty uncertain ending for our beloved Han Solo, for all of us who can't look Han Solo in the eye without saying with Princess Leia, I love you. And it was a cliffhanger in like the best sense because I just could not wait to see the next movie. I had to wait for some reason. I don't really remember why, but I remember just being like so distracted and stressed out. Like I couldn't focus on anything else because I just had to know what happens to Han Solo. So a great cliffhanger, but the thing was, even in that movie, there was a lot of really solid resolution that happened too. After all the high action, high intensity, fast paced stuff that happens in the climax, you still get some aftermath. We see Luke getting healed from the injuries that he sustained in that battle, so there's like some recovery time. We see him talking with Leia about what their plan is going forward. We get a nice like from behind shot of them gazing out into the galaxy, contemplating the universe and how they will face whatever comes together. So it's a really, really nice wrap up, great resolution, even as you have this giant cliffhanger hanging over your head of what is going to happen to Han Solo. So this has been really helpful to me and really on my mind lately as I look at some of my old stuff and realize what kind of work it needs in order to make an actual ending. For me, that has meant adjusting my pacing and the placement of some of the beats of story. So instead of like ramping up and ramping up and ramping up and then just cutting off, I moved my climax back a little bit so that I can ramp toward a climax but still have some time for falling action, for things to slow down, for characters to have some aftermath time, some regrouping and breathing time. It's like a trampoline. Imagine this. You are jumping on a trampoline. The moment when you jump up towards your highest point, that's like your rising action to the climax. That's when you're driving up with the most force and urgency behind you. And when you hit the highest point, that's like the most tense moment in your story where everything is culminating. After that, it's just kind of like a natural fall. There's not the same force behind that movement, but it's just, it's natural. Like your story can't just keep getting more and more tense. At some point, there's going to be a descent of all that tension to give your characters time to to breathe. That's your falling action. And then when you hit the ground or hit the trampoline, that's your resolution. You have made a full arc. You have completed that movement. It's a bookend for your story. You have a beginning, you have an end, and you're tying up the loose ends that are necessary to tie up in this particular story. Now, I think if you're writing just one book, it would probably be like jumping up and down on the ground. Like you do your leap and then you come down on the ground and it's done. But if you're writing a series and this is maybe like the first or second book in your series, then it's more like a trampoline because you're coming down. When you hit the trampoline, you have that resolution, but there's still all that potential energy 
energy under you, all those unresolved threads that you're deliberately leaving unresolved that are going to give you the force and the spring to surge forward into the next book. I don't know if that metaphor makes sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me. If you get nothing else out of this video, take what I learned from Go Teen Writers that a story can't just cut off, it has to have an ending, and that even a cliffhanger ending has to have some form of resolution to make it satisfying to the reader. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment below with your favorite cliffhanger ending and whether or not you feel like it has adequate resolution. Because I'm sure there are examples out there that just don't do that and I'd be really curious to know how that worked and how they did it. And as always, do not forget to spend some time in the clouds today.